This episode of Super Carlin Brothers is brought to you by Audible. Hey, brother! Jay, I have a little riddle for you today. Who has gorgeous flowing locks, is terrible at magic, and somehow is still clung to power? That's right! Lucius Malfoy. Yeah, that's right. I'm saying Lucius Malfoy is in the same boat as Gilderoy Lockhart. In fact, Gilderoy Lockhart might actually be more useful. Like, he teaches Harry Expelliarmus, which is pretty handy. Well, no, no, no. Snape, Snape actually teaches him that. But he provides the circumstance, which is still more useful than what anything Lucius does. But so today we are going to discuss just the absolute worst Death Eater of them all and try to determine whether or not he was trying to kill Harry Potter. <laughs> Okay, well, I mean, obviously, eventually his plan is to kill Harry Potter, or at the very least, help the Dark Lord who's trying to kill Harry Potter. But my real question is, was he trying to kill him with his original plan when opening the Chamber of Secrets? If so, then I agree. It's not a very good plan. But then again, Malfoy isn't a very good Death Eater. So there you go. Well, Lucius, that is. Draco actually ends up being pretty good. He proves himself a worthy Occlumens and finds a way into Hogwarts. I think even Dumbledore was impressed with that. Lucius, though, oh, oh, Lucius, worst Death Eater ever. And not like worst in the good way, like he's the best at being bad. No, that would probably be Bellatrix. She's great at being bad. Worst meaning he's bad at being bad. I mean, if you really go back and review, he accomplishes exactly nothing through the entirety of the series. In Chamber of Secrets, he does successfully open the Chamber of Secrets, but nobody ends up dying. He loses his house elf in the process and ends up destroying a part of his master's soul also. And not to mention, he drops a boatload on those Nimbus 2001s, and the Slytherins still lose the cup, even with Dobby's help, whether he had asked for it or not, who literally breaks Harry's arm mid-game. But seriously, this guy's supposed to be like such a big deal, and he can't even rig a Hogwarts Quidditch match. Though in Prisoner, he's back at it again with a slightly less diabolical plan than before when he opened like a death chamber armed with a giant snake. No, this, this time what he's shooting for is getting one of Harry's best friend's pets sentenced to death, and he's not even successful at that. Though, to be fair, I am glad that he took a break from brushing his hair to do literally anything else. Good job, bud. Good job. In Gobble of Fire, he is one of the Death Eaters at the Quidditch World Cup, causing a commotion. But then at the sight of the Dark Mark, he flees the scene and later lies to Voldemort about it, who then calls him out. And finally, he famously fails to receive the prophecy in Order of the Phoenix and then gets sent to Azkaban. Just crushing it, man. Honestly though, I don't know who Draco thinks that he's fooling with this whole, wait till my father hears about this bit. Yeah, why Draco? What's gonna happen? Is he gonna throw his hair into a ponytail and fuss about it? But despite the ineffectiveness, of his many plans, he is constantly trying to do mean things. So the thing that I want to talk about today is whether or not in Chamber of Secrets he not only wants to open the chamber, but also try to kill Harry. When you read through the book, it would not immediately appear that this is his prime motivation. If anything, it sounds like what he's really trying to do is have Dumbledore kicked out of the school. Which, to be fair, he does momentarily achieve that goal, but on the other hand, he does fail to even rid the school of a single Muggleborn, so there's that. And indeed, that is the intended purpose of the chamber but I think that he had a more direct target and we do have quite a few clues to go off of. First of all, who he gives the diary to to begin with, Ginny Weasley. This is actually an ingenious pick for a variety of reasons. One, the Weasley family is a well-known pure blood family with a long history in Gryffindor. And therefore they would be very unlikely suspects for opening the chamber. Second, Ginny is a first year who you probably just wouldn't expect dark magic to be coming from. And she's a little girl. The demographic I'm assuming occupies the greatest slice of the people who still write in Diaries pie, which as far as I can tell, fills out with the following. High school aged girls, grandmothers, middle school girls, people who live on ships, people who recently downloaded diary apps, and of course, dark lords. Yeah, you heard me, Tom Riddle, you just got pie chart slammed. Kids, please remember to always pie chart responsibly. Also, also, actually, actually, Lucius would also know that Harry had become friends with the Weasleys because no doubt Draco told him. Not now, Draco, I have very important business 
to attend to. Now, I doubt that Lucius would know that Ginny had a crush on Harry or that she would eventually write about him in the diary, but I have no doubt in my mind that he specifically gave it to her for a reason. Especially when you consider his other option was basically going to dying on Alley and just hoping to slip the book in with any other student and hoping that they would write in it. This was, of course, an item that was entrusted to him by Lord Voldemort himself, so I have a feeling he wouldn't be totally careless with it. That being said, he didn't know that it was a Horcrux, just that it would open the Chamber of Secrets. It's possible he didn't even know how it would open the Chamber of Secrets, but I have a question. Do you, do you think he ever wrote in it himself? Dearest Tom, Narcissa yelled at me again. She keeps telling me that it's unbecoming for a husband to have better hair than his wife, but I just can't bring myself to cut it. I just feel so powerful with a bow in my hair. My guess is at the very least, Voldemort had told him that he had preserved his 16 year old self inside of the diary and that it could be used to open the Chamber of Secrets. Lucius would have known that it was Voldemort who opened the chamber the first time, or at least it's implied by Dumbledore when he says, the same person as last time, Lucius. Lord Voldemort. From there, it wouldn't be much of a stretch to assume that whoever the diary talked to would inquire about Tom Riddle's future self and once he learned about Harry Potter, attempt to kill him. But it's more than him specifically selecting Ginny Weasley to give the diary to and kind of a vague overall understanding about how the diary works that points to Harry as the true target. First, there's the timing of the events, which to fully understand, we need to look a little bit further into the Malfoy's past. In a recent article on Pottermore about Draco Malfoy, we learned that despite what Lucius tells Voldemort at the graveyard, he actually had different plans while his master was in hiding. After Voldemort fell, Lucius actually managed to maintain his power and status in the wizarding community. He would give to seemingly worthwhile causes, but secretly was hoping for another chance at world domination. Though Malfoy's hopes did not lie in the return of Lord Voldemort, but instead, none other than Harry Potter. It was a weird and comforting thought to many of the ex-Death Eaters that the only thing that could have taken down Lord Voldemort himself, especially by a baby, is that he must have been an even more powerful dark wizard. One that they could perhaps eventually rally behind again. So, so in other words, Lucius's big grand plan for world domination rested on the tiny little shoulders of an infant. The rationalization is actually kind of there. Maybe Voldemort himself went to attack the baby because he knew that eventually it would grow up to be his match. And maybe this belief that this boy could could potentially be a dark wizard is the reason why he was removed from the wizarding community altogether. But of course we know this isn't true. Despite Lucius's hopes, Draco would return home from Hogwarts with the report that the great and powerful and famous Harry Potter is nothing more than a mediocre muggle loving boy who's consorting with the worst kind of pure blood wizards imaginable. From Weasley. And this I think is exactly the reason why the Chamber of Secrets gets opened in Harry's second year because Lucius is no longer holding out hope that they could all eventually rally behind Harry. The timing of it really is kind of Critical. Have you ever wondered why the chamber opens in Harry's second year at school? In every other book, the key conflict is the result of some other outside cause. But Harry would have had a pretty regular second year at Hogwarts if the chamber hadn't just randomly been opened. But this provides some much needed reasoning. Like why wait 12 years? Why not just send the diary along with Draco during his first year? Or for that matter, why send it while your kid is at school at all, putting him at risk? All of these questions are answered by Lucius finally realizing that Harry himself is not a dark wizard. He was instead a potential threat and the reason why his old master was destroyed and needs to be eliminated. If you are unsure about Lucius's true intentions, I recommend you check out today's sponsor who I want to give a big thank you to, Audible. If you have ever wondered yourself, gosh, how do the Carlin brothers know so much about Harry Potter? Well, the answer is Audible. Jay and I are constantly on Audible, listening and re-listening to the books. And Audible is offering our viewers a free audiobook with a 30-day trial membership just by going to audible.com backslash SCB. I'll put a link in the description down below. Or text SCB to 500-500. Either way, I'll put a link in the description down below. We love it because we're always able to be learning more about the wizarding world wherever we are, whatever we're doing. Seriously guys, I just pop in my headphones whether I'm going on a run or a hike or I'm traveling, whatever you are doing this summer, just pop it in and voila. Harry. Jim Dale does a wonderful Lockhart. My book recommendation for today has got to be Chamber of Secrets. It's probably my favorite book to listen to out of the entire series, just because seriously, Jim Dale does such a spectacular Lockhart and you know how much here at Super Carlin Brothers, we love Lockhart. Even if you guys are like us and have already 
already read the books a hundred times, but have never listened to them, I highly recommend it. Somehow it's just a completely different immersive experience and it's seriously so much fun. Again, Audible is offering our viewers a free audiobook with a 30 day trial membership. Simply go to audible.com backslash SCB or text SCB to 500500 to get access to the unmatched selection of audio programs. Download a title and start listening today for free. It's just that easy. Also, if there's any other books that you think we should be listening to, be sure to leave those in the comments down below. And now, back to the video. If you are still not convinced, there is still the Dobby factor. Who does Dobby come to specifically warn about the opening of the Chamber of Secrets? Harry Potter. Why? Why only Harry? Why is it only important that Harry Potter doesn't go back to school? Everyone else can die. Because Dobby lives with the Malfoys and knows that Harry is the real target. And you might be saying, uh, Ben, he tells us why, because he's heard of Harry's greatness and how he took down the Dark Lord and how lives improved for house elves after that. Mm-hmm, mm -hmm, I hear you, but remember what we just learned, Lucius thought that Harry might be great and powerful. The irony of Dobby is that it's possible that he's helping Harry for the wrong reasons. Like, think about it. The reason why Dobby thinks Harry is great is probably because he's just listened to the Malfoys for the past 11 years. Talk about how potentially great he is. Of course, he knows that they are mean and that house elves lives have improved since Harry has been around and that now they want to kill Harry. So of course he wants to help. Also the fact that Dobby arrives at the Dursleys over the summer before the diary has even been given to Ginny Weasley makes it seem like the plan was a little bit more thought out. But there you go, Jay. That is my thoughts on why I believe Harry was the real target of the opening of the Chamber of Secrets. For my question of the day, what do you guys think? Do you buy into this idea? be sure to leave your thoughts in the towel section down below. But guys, as always, thanks for watching. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. If you'd like to see some more Malfoy action from us, you can click this video right here to find out whether or not Draco was in fact a werewolf. Or if you would like to see which house Hagrid actually was in, you can click this video right here. But Jay, that's all I've got for you today, man. I will see you on Tuesday.